Do you remember banana splits? Well, let's turn it up a notch. Welcome back to Jamie and Chef. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. Uh, I have now made four recipes from this cookbook right here. French Laundry from Thomas Keller. Each one of them has been exceptional. Some of the best cooking I've ever cooked. We got two more episodes following along to this book, then I'm gonna move on to something else. So uh, let's make them count. Banana split. Poached banana ice cream with white chocolate, banana crepes, and chocolate sauce. And it's even got a cherry on top. So <sighs> I've got a new toy to play with. We'll introduce that very shortly. But let's just get started. It's gonna be a good day. I hope. All right, we're gonna start off with the banana ice cream. Got my bananas. We're gonna need a saucepan and we need to peel them. So easy first step. It's gonna be three of them. One cup of heavy cream, one cup of milk. Sorry, that was the cream. That was the milk. Quarter cup of sugar. All right, I'm gonna scrape in the seeds of a quarter of a vanilla pod. I know, I've grown so much, haven't I? <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that incident anymore. We're past it. They appear to be seedless now. That's great. Combine the heavy cream and the vanilla bean seeds. So I'm adding in the vanilla bean seeds from the vanilla pod as well as the pod itself. Cover the bananas with a paper towel and that's gonna keep them submerged. Heat this slowly for 10 to Yeah, I'm gonna opt for 15. I really want those nanners to steep. Stop saying nanners. Bananas need to stay submerged. I'm not simmering this. I'm keeping it just under that point. So I'm gonna need a bowl and a strainer. Thank you. All right, so I got a bowl. The bananas need to be soft, but not mushy. And they are. So I gotta remove and drain them well, but also strain the liquid. Two cups worth of this poaching liquid. How much do I have? Two cups? Please have two cups worth. Oh yes, we got two cups. All right, let's bring over the whiz kid. What I'm gonna do here is take the bananas, put them into the food processor, but I don't want the vanilla bean pods. I don't want the vanilla bean stuff you can find. Any parts of the banana are welcome, just not the vanilla bean pods. Blend well, TK says. Stop. Vanilla bean. Scrape the puree through the, right. Tammy me. Thank you. Yeah, it's the, I just picked this up specifically for this episode. There's a whole page dedicated in this cookbook to these kinds of things. It's like a flat strainer. It's called a Tammy, I think. Tammy? Tamis? Tammy. Tommy. Oh, bowl me please. Thank you. Okay, and then let's just add all the banana puree into my new toy here. This isn't the toy I was telling you about though. This is just a, this is just kind of the opening act. Scrape it through. I think this is just a process that takes a long time. So buckle up. All right, this is just taking so, so long. Same results, just much, much faster. Great, I love this strainer. That took a while, so um, I'm happy with that. That's just under a cup worth of this banana puree. That dog bark is just nails on the chalkboard. Also, there's a siren, but it's that dog bark that's really getting to me right now. It's a cocker spaniel. How am I supposed to make a banana split under these conditions? So strained poaching liquid into a saucepan. Bring it up to a simmer. Bowl me. Thank you. Big bowl, but I'll make it work. Five egg yolks. In with the egg yolks, a quarter cup of sugar, and a pinch of kosher salt. Whisk until the yolks have thickened and lightened in color. 
So the straining poaching liquid, I'm only gonna pour in one third, don't worry, I know about tempering now. Okay, that's, that's probably enough. Eggs are not gonna scramble under my watch today. Add in a little more. Okay, so once the eggs have been tempered, let's return that back to the saucepan. Don't worry, I know, it's a wire whisk. I got a, uh, I got another one here. It's all good, it's all good. Evan, let me get this over here. Two bowls. Beautiful. Gonna need some ice, please. Great. A nice water bath in a, let's go over to the stove. On a low heat, let me just stir this until it is thickened and it can coat the back of a spoon. Immediately goes into the bowl of ice, you know what I mean. Into the bowl with the, the in the ice bath. Yes, we got there. Stir occasionally until it is cooled. I could probably get this a little thicker, honestly. All right, my mistake. Jumped the gun there a bit. I don't think the custard was thick enough. Yeah, stirring occasionally until the custard has cooled. So I gotta strain this. Where'd this bowl come from? Well, it came from somewhere. In through a strainer into another bowl. Recover it and then refrigerate until very cold. The banana puree. I'm gonna add it in here. I'm gonna see how much it weighs. 167 grams. And now, with this bowl here, some white chocolate chips here. I need 167 grams of this as well. Perfect. All right, so I filled my saucepan up with water. I'm gonna get that up to a simmer. Once that... It's loud out there today. So once the water's to a simmer, chocolate goes on top. So we just keep stirring until melted and smooth. And then with the banana puree, I gotta warm it up. He says microwave is cool. Smooth chocolate. Bring over the whiz kid. Okay, banana puree in. We now have a helicopter, great. The white chocolate into the food processor as well. Now we just gotta blend this together to start. The food processor might be too big for what I'm asking it to do right now. The immersion blender instead, how about that? One eighth teaspoon of salt. I just need a little bit of lemon here as well. A couple drops. That was probably too many, too many. Remove, remove. Now this puree needs to go in the fridge for several hours. Hey, welcome back to a semi-clean kitchen. He shoots, he scores. We gotta make the dessert crepes. Yeah, I'm saying crepes today. Usually, you know, I'm not getting into it today. I'm saying crepes, I'm too focused on the recipe. I have a scant half cup of flour here and I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt just a pinch, man. And uh, where's the old uh, miniature whisk here? Make a well in the flour. I need a half of a cup and a quarter of milk. Uh, half of a cup and a quarter. Uh, there, I'm gonna add in an egg. Since I'm halving this recipe, I'm gonna split an egg in half. I have confidence in my eyeballing abilities today. Whisk that together. The milk and the eggs into the well. A tablespoon of melted butter. We're making sweet crepes, so I need half a tablespoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of vanilla. Whisk it all together. Okay, so yeah. We're gonna strain it through a fine mesh strainer. I always struggle with this method in Julia Child's crepe recipe. But Thomas Keller's seems much more my speed. I like the consistency of this. Eight and a half inch nonstick pan. I'm gonna turn the heat up to a medium high. TK uses nonstick spray. I just opt for the butter, you know? With any crepe recipe I've followed along to, they always have you rest the batter uh, for at least an hour in the fridge so that the flour can just kind of just calm down and absorb everything. But this recipe doesn't have any mention of that. So, uh, all right, that's fine, because I didn't want to wait an hour anyway. 
Okay, that was the test. Butter is a sizzling. Are you ready? I need the crepe to have like brown spots all over it to kind of like resemble a banana. Ow! Ow! Move it all around the base of the pan. Come on. Any places that need a little patchwork, you know who to call. 35 to 45 seconds on the first side. And I just grab it. Honestly, just grab it. It's easier. Look at those spots. They're there. Cool. So go retrieve the banana white chocolate puree. Where is my nicest crepe? That's a nice one. Trim the edges of the crepe to square them. Square it. Spoon one third of the filling across the lower third of the crepe. Okay, so apparently this has to be five by two rectangle of filling in here. So I kind of get the gist of it. Two inches, uh, yee, gentle. Where's my freaking thing? Five by two. Gently roll the crepe up into a cylinder. I don't want it to overlap that much, right? All or nothing with this one crepe because I have an idea of what he's going for. I don't think I'm achieving it right now. It's holding pretty steady right now. I've rolled it up into a nice looking cylinder, but it is getting a bit too warm. Slop that up and eat it. I'm gonna wrap this up into plastic wrap. It needs to hold its shape, twist the ends of it. I gotta freeze this for at least a few hours. I only used one crepe and all that filling just went into one because I thought like, you know, looking and matching to that photo, I think that's what we're trying to go for, that size, which was like a fairly, like a two inch in diameter circle. It's not really specific in the book. That being said, I have leftover crepes that I'm not gonna end up using for this. So I'll eat them. So may I introduce you to Whitey Ford? It's my ice cream machine. Yeah, I always wanted one and I, I never really wanted to commit to getting one until this recipe. I was like, oh, what the hell, why not? You're one of those things that has a really short cord. I hate that. Like why, like what, how practical is this? Now I don't really know how to work it besides the fact that there's an on and off button. I haven't played around with it just yet. I figure I just do it on the show, so. Yeah, fairly straightforward. Now I've had this other piece in the freezer hanging out overnight. It's this big freezer bowl. I don't want to grab it out just yet because you have to act fast when you take it out. Uh, so I figure I get the custard for the ice cream out first. Well, let's get everything out. This has been in the freezer overnight. I don't know how that works. Cool, now I got this mixing paddle that goes in, the lid. Switch it on. All right, and just, let me just pour this in. All TK says is to freeze the ice cream in the machine and the instructions say it's gonna take around 20 minutes. Churn, baby, churn. I'm fairly anticlimactic if you ask me. So when the mixture has thickened to my liking, it's frozen, it's looking pretty nice. Um, um, I need something. It's gonna stick to the sides if I refreeze it. So I'm just gonna switcheroo over here. Okay, as incredible as this all looks. And taste. I mean, that's as far as Whitey Ford wanted to push it today. Into the ice box it goes for like an hour. I don't know, I don't think it needs that long. Oh, sh we made it this far. We're still chugging along over here. I'm using four ounces of bittersweet chocolate. This is a uh, 72 percenter. So, you know, it's dark, but it's, it's nice. Finally chopped this. Bowl me. Thank you. So in my saucepan, I'm just gonna add in a cup of heavy cream. 
That's, sorry, that's half a cup. I'm halving the recipe, halving the recipe. Half a tablespoon of light corn syrup. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Woo! So once that cream comes to a boil, I'm gonna pour it on top of the chocolate. Just let it hang out like this for a few minutes until it's melted. Stir it until smooth. That's certainly one way to make chocolate sauce. I love it. It's smooth as hell. Like, look how smooth this is. What's up? I have a squeeze bottle. Good thing too, because I'm gonna need it for this next step. All right, so get the chocolate sauce into the bottle. So now I gotta make some sweetened whipped cream. Of course, I could've just purchased it, cool whip style, but uh, no, I'm gonna make it. So uh, I need half a cup worth of heavy rip whipping cream. You don't need that much. Half a teaspoon of vanilla, half a tablespoon of sugar. Bowl me one chilled bowl. Thank you. You know what I gotta do is whip this up into stiff peaks over here. All right, let's get serious. That's gonna have a banana split in a second. We just gotta... It is time. Start with the crepe filled with the uh, crepe filling. <laughs> let's unwrap it and trim the ends. So three eighths of an inch. Place the three slices in a row across the center of the plate. <laughs> kind of looks like a banana. Thaw them slightly for five minutes, leaving it just like this. Meanwhile, warm up the chocolate. I'm just gonna do like, you know, a couple seconds. Nothing major. Next thing we gotta do is prep a piping bag. And that's kind of star-like. It's happening. It is happening right now. Let's go get our whipped cream. I don't need much. Pipe the chocolate sauce around the crepe slices. Judging from that photo, it just looks like, like the entire plate almost. I don't know. Well, we'll go for it. Go in between. Yeah, he goes in between. Kind of making this look as nice as I can. It does still look like it's coming out of a squeeze bottle, which it is. It's hard to see in that photo what I'm supposed to do, but. Top each slice with a small scoop of banana ice cream. Keep it together, man, keep it together. Scoop one here as well. Come on, you can do this. Scoop. Uh-oh, it's already starting to melt. I guess I should have kept this in the freezer longer, but I've committed myself. I have to see it through. Let's get that last scoop on there. You're going too big with the scoops. Calm down with the scoops. Don't overdo it there, Sonny Bob. Pipe a rosette of whipped cream onto each scoop. <laughs> yes. And we promised cherries on top, right? We're gonna fulfill that promise. Some nice looking maraschino, maraschino, maraschino. Well, we got some cherries over here and they're nice looking. So, okay, one on top. <gasps> Calm down. Ah, all right. I, no time to waste. Order up. No. Oh my God. I tried to act as fast as I could with this thing. Come on. Where's that freaking cherry? Oh, you, you see it there. Okay. Oh, I thought I would have more time. <laughs> That's incredible. It's like you're eating like a reconstructed banana made out of banana and like crepe and the ice cream is just unstoppable. I've never had ice cream like that before. As soon as I took it out of the freezer, it just started like melting away, but in like the greatest way possible. It's like the texture of it was so perfect, so smooth. Just think of a banana split. When was the last time you had one? Probably 
when I was like 10. And I took a bite out of this and it's just like instantly, I remembered where I was the last time I had one. It's that good. Just like took me right back to the past. 11 out of 10 dessert today. Only downside was that I wasn't able to show it off. And I worked so damn hard to present it to make it look nice on the plate. And as soon as I added the cherry on top, I hope you were able to get a glimpse of what it looked like. I did. It was there for a moment and then that's it. That's all. This was Jamie and Chef Thomas Keller. Later. There's no turning back now. It's all gone, except for a little bit of it, but I'm saving that for someone else. It's not for me. It's not for you. It's for someone else. She called it already. Now we have made the coffee and the donuts from this cookbook already. And that was like the best dessert I've ever made. And now this one is just like hand in hand with it. Coffee and the donuts might edge it out just slightly, but this one is just, you know, they're holding hands right across the finish line.